Welcome back, everybody. Oh my god. It's here! It's here, and it happened on my birthday. Oh, it's only, like, all, I'm not even asking for birthday wishes at all. I don't get any comments on these videos anyways, besides one. Thank you, buddy. Um, but... I'm just like the fact that this lined up so perfectly and this little M I'm, I try not to cuss so I don't get demonetized so I can make my two cents on this video. But you know what? Actually, yeah, I, I don't want to cuss. I want to, you know, if anyone's watching this. But the fact that this little MFR Mojito has been running around Shibuya, just Nanami and then Nobara and then Junpei last season and just like keeps living. He, and even when he fought Gojo, he, like, dodged Gojo's punch. Like, I knew he wasn't going to die right then, but I was like, you know what? Just let me, let Gojo just land one just right there, and he didn't. And the fact that on my birthday he gets, we get that get back, baby. We're back. We're here. Welcome to my review of Metamorphosis, the latest episode of Jujutsu Kaisen Shibuya Incident. Mojito, like... We start off right off where we left off with him, like, just doing full, was it, soul multiplicity, like, omnidirectional, erupts the entire cement around the 109 Shibuya Mall. Like, the entire city block is just Mahito, like, covered in transfigured human goop, basically. Like, the, it, it, I, I made a TikTok about it where someone, like, called Nobara fodder because she died. I was like, Mahito's insanely strong. And as we see throughout this episode... The fact that Mahito is, like, a few months old, maybe six months old at the most, because, like, he was created in front of Junpei. I don't think Junpei created him, but, like, all the evilness of, like, humans in that movie theater created Mahito, I think, or he manifested right there. I don't know, but he was, ju he just, we saw him come into creation in season one. He's not like Jogo or Hanami that's been around for a long time. But, like, he's really, really young. And the fact that, like, in his first real fight, he does a domain expansion. And then he's just getting more and more and more powerful. And it's just because he loves being a curse and kills so many people, transfigures so many people, doesn't care. Like, he is fully, you know, like I, I said it last week, what Sukuna told Jogo he should have been doing is, like, you're strong. You should have been just causing mayhem this whole time instead of, you know, sneaking around having these, like, devious plans. Just wreak havoc, and you might have been able to achieve your goals. Um, and that's what Mahito does. And the fact that he's, like this, only a few months old. I can't even imagine, like, a one-year-old Mahito, two-year-old, ten-year-old. Like, he'd be up there. I don't know if he'd be Gojo level, but he'd be right below him if not as powerful as both as both gojo and sukuna like he is crazy powerful right now i still love boogie woogie with toto uh like how he bear hugs mojito and he's like here line it up mojito twists his head off creates a little another little double they destroy that double. Mahito just wants to separate Toto from Yuji because he knows, like, together they can beat him, but he thinks he can beat them one on one. So Mahito does the the typical video game thing where he spawns in the tough opponent, like the tough NPC, you know, um, baddies. Where you like, you know, like in Spider Man, I just got done playing Spider Man too, where like you have, you know. You have, like, the regular NPC guys, and then you got the big bruisers. Like, oh, I can't do the uppercut punch on them. I got to find a different way to beat them. And so, like, it's basically that. Like, the, he, he spawns in the bruisers. And I don't think, even in the Hanami fight, I don't think Toto ever got punched. I think, like, the only time we see Toto get punched is, like, by Panda when he was beating up uh, Megami. And so seeing Toto get punched here was, like, pretty shocking. I was like, oh, he just got sent through that building. But he manages to come out on top against three of the Brutes. I just call them. I know they have, like, a name. I don't care. But watching the credits, I think everything has been revealed. Literally, like, you see Toto kissing his locket. In the in the credits, you see him. I think... I, I don't want to say everything's been revealed because I think I said that last week and there hadn't been. Uh... And I, you see the, the destroyed Shibuya and nobody in the final shot. Like, everyone's gone either dead 
or, you know, uh, Kusakabe and Panda ran away from Sukuna. Are they alive? I don't know. Is Meimei and Wee Wee alive? Uh, I don't... The end of this episode really leaves that up in the air, too. Um, but... Going back to Yuji versus Mahito, he's got the snakes coming at him. Yuji throws, like, they they destroy the 109 mall. It was, like, the one thing left standing in Shibuya, basically. And they destroy that. Yuji throws the entire 109, like, neon sign at a snake. Kid's insanely strong. Um, and then Mahito hits, hits him with, like, throws him. And guess where he ends up? Right next to Toto, baby. We're back. We're so back. Mahito's standing there, and this is where I think, like, he's so powerful, is that, like, the point to domain expansion to save everyone around him, uh, to save everyone around Gojo in uh, B5 subway level, is genius. Like, and you're like, oh, man, no one could ever do this, but Mahito does it. He knows that if he does his domain expansion any longer with Yuji, Sukuna will kill him. But he thinks that if I just get this point to expansion off, just so I can guarantee a hit on Toto with my idle transfiguration and kill him, I can handle Yuji one-on-one. -on -one. And he does. He manages to hit it, and then he, like, he hits uh, Toto's arm with it. Toto chops his arm off and flings it away um, as it, like, explodes. Uh, Mihito run past Yuji. He's got, uh, he hits him with a black flash. Yuji, co uh, not Yuji, Toto covers up with his curse energy but still gets hit hard by it's a black flash so obviously it gets hard but in that moment because of domain expansion he can't use his technique right there but now that toto's weakened he will definitely get transfigured if mojito touches him again but right before he's about to do it uh he's like coming in for the he's coming in for the idle transfiguration Toto goes into full delusional mode, and him and his favorite idol, Taka Takada-chan, like, go <laughs> start tag-teaming Mahito in his imagination. And this is the season one stuff that we've been missing. It really is. Like, Toto is the breath of fresh air we really needed because this, even before, you know, with, like, there's, like, there's one moment, you know, where, you're, you know, uh... Yuji's like, oh, you're so bad at lying, Megami. Oh, you're so bad. But even when they were fighting those sorcerers and they flash back to them, like that guy's cutting off the dude's face just for fun. The grandma kills a little girl to kill the dad. And it was like, oh, um, as she was dying, she screamed for her mother. So she doesn't love you that much. Like, uh, just like really dark stuff. And even, like, with Mei Mei, we're like, oh, what's her relationship with her brother? And then we get, obviously, the, the Gojo, uh, Gato is dead revealing. He's got a, a Krang brain in his, in his brain. Like, everything. Everything has been so dark. And we, you know, even, like, that one Nobara flashback from last episode was just like, good lord. Like, it... They, they managed to take it right away from us, but, like, even, like, the, the goofy animation of them dabbing the shirt, like, I was like, oh, I missed this. Like, just these little moments of levity, and Toto gives us all that. And this Takara-chan thing was so perfect, and it was so insane. Um, and what ha ends up happening is that he slaps Mahito's hand to do his boogie-woogie. And his hand's like scarred and burned. He's like, I'm lucky I got away with that because of his idle transfiguration. But he manages to switch with Yuji with that boogie woogie. And Yuji hits him with a black flash right to the face. Mm, you know, love it. But Mahito's not done yet. This is what I'm saying is how insanely powerful this young special grade curse is. And it's almost like annoying where it's just like, oh, how many level ups does this dude have? Like he keeps like getting more powerful meanwhile our our heroes keep getting weaker because they keep getting hit with black flashes like Toto's basically out of the fight now um and uh oh yeah in his locket was Takara-chan and Yuji the two sides of the locket very awesome um but he upgrades himself I know there's a name for it but I'm just gonna call it armored self and like he's all sleek and armored out and just like he does the Yes, like the the super cool pose, and now Yuji's like he's like I guess they're going back and forth. The animation is just absolutely insane for this. Like I feel like the you know we we've had talks about Mappa animators striking, and if we were gonna get the rest of the season, I think the season was done. I hope they do go on strike. Um, 
animators in general need to be paid both here in America and in uh, Japan because I know there's like Japan's work culture is very different. Like they are working probably 18 hours a day. There's no overtime. Like I don't know. Like they they're just not paid enough. They they're not paid enough whatsoever, and they're working really hard to bring us this amazing stuff. And I hope like if. Season three of Jujutsu Kaisen isn't out till 2027, 28 because of, of a strike. You know what? It'll just be that much better when it comes around because they'll be fully paid, insured, rested employees. And they're going to be like, let's do this. And so I hope that happens. I, I mean, yeah, I don't want it to come out in 2028. But what's important is that these artists that are creating some of the best art and the best cinema of the year... And one of the best new gen animes of all time are being fairly compensated for their work. But anyways, I'll step off my soapbox. But the animation is just absolutely insane. And I feel like it's kind of better than the beginning of the season, which is weird because, like, I noticed even, like, some of the, like, I don't know. I really like the season one animation. And to me, like, they took a lot of the gloss off, off this season two. And even in a premature death arc, I was like, oh, it looks different, but I like it. But all this, this whole Mahito Toto Yuji fight has reminded me so much of season one. And it's really, really good. And there hasn't been a lot of bad animation this season. You could tell where they saved their budget, which, you know, hey, I've talked about um, Castlevania being the masters of knowing where to put your budget in your shows. But yes, I love it so much. Um, the Black Flash music kicks in. Uh, cause like, you know, they're going back and forth. Mojito's winning again. Uh, and he's just like, I have to hit a black flash. And they keep saying like, no sorcerer can hit a black flash on command. But Mojito's like, if anyone can, I think Yuji probably can. So he's trying to, you know, bouncing all around, trying to find like the weak spot, trying to find his blind spot. And right as he's about to hit Yuji, Toto comes up and he says, you should know, Cursed Spirit. Applause with my hands is only a show. It's really the acclamation of the soul. And he claps his hand and his stump. And he's like, my boogie woogie is dead. And he flips Yuji right behind uh, Mahito. Yuji lands the dopest black flash right on Mahito. Cracks his armor. Reverts him back to his usual self. And this is what I've been waiting for. Is Mahito fully broken down. Fully weakened. Skinny. Freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, what's happening right now? And Yuji just like... I am you. You're right. I was stupid to not listen to what you were saying and understand it. I don't need to find a reason to kill curses. I don't need to find this greater meaning. I'm just going to kill you. And if you come back as a different curse, with a different name, with a different look, I'm going to kill you. I'll kill you, and I'll kill you. And maybe after I'm dead, some greater meaning will come of my life. But for now, I'm just going to kill you. And it's just the coldest. Oh, like, Yuji has changed. Yuji has changed. Uh, you know, our sweet boy might be gone. And we'll miss him. But to a certain extent, he needed, he didn't need, like, his friends to die or anything. But, like, you know, what Mahito was saying in the last episode is, like, was right. Where he's like, this isn't, like, you know, some pest extermination. This is war. We are fighting for the fate of the world right now. And Yuji didn't realize that. And now he does. And he's just like, no greater meaning. Just killing curses. And I love the animation of this. Where like, as Mahito's running, like they, they flip to like the snowy wilderness. It's cold. It's unforgiving. Mahito, like, like, he turns into like basically like a bunny. And you see like Yuji turns into like a wolf as he's slowly stalking his prey. It's so well done. And right as, again, but again, it's like anime stuff where he's like slowly walking, like, kill him. This man has powered up out of nowhere so many times in the short time he's been around. Kill him right now. And of course, right as he's about to kill him, Krang Brainworm Ghetto shows up and says, Do you need me to save you, Mahito? And I'm afraid that he's going to absorb Mahito because it seemed like he was going to do that when he was fighting Mechamaru. He's like, oh, he's pretty weak right now. It could absorb him. And I thought that, you know, we thought that was Ghetto at the time, but we know it's not anymore. It's, you know, Krang Curse, whatever his name is. And I 
I don't know what happened to Mei Mei and Wee Wee. It seems like they were defeated, which is understandable because I'm sure Ghetto himself could defeat Mei Mei. Um, maybe. I don't know. Mei Mei's pretty strong. But I don't know. Like, we didn't get to see any of that Mei Mei, you know, Ghetto fight. So we'll see. But that's where the episode ends. And of course, Mahito's going to find some kind of way to live through this and it's so frustrating and I hate it and I just wanted him to die. I wanted him to just like get punched one more time and like go full Hanami, splat up against a wall um, and all the disaster curses would be gone. Like, what is it? Three out of four are gone. We're just waiting for this last one. But yes, that is where the episode ends and it's quite an episode. Uh, a lot of action. Uh, I feel like the last few have been a lot of action, but just the, the big scene was... The IMU scene, and what a change from the beginning of this season to now. His face is blo uh, blarred and scuddied, scarred and bloodied, and he's got like half his mouth open from punches he's taken. Um, and he's just, he's just done. He's just, he's just done, and it hurts to see, uh, truly. But I love this episode so much. Toto is the man. I love him, and I don't know. I, he's definitely alive. Um, but I don't know if he's going to be back because like if he can't use Boogie Woogie, I'm sure he's still very strong. But, you know, having that curse technique is like such an advantage in fighting, especially, you know, the curses that Toto fights, which are first and special grade curses. Um, so I don't know. It's tough to see. But I love this episode so much, and I don't know how many more are we getting for this season. I'm not sure. How many JJK episodes in season two? 23 episodes. Um, let's see. So we got two more. So this is episode 21. So we've got two more. So... December 21st and December, like, it goes all the way through December. Two more episodes, guys. I will be here counting them down. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I love seeing Mahito get his ass beat on my birthday. Let's go.